Good afternoon. I'd like to call the uh, special ordinance committee meeting to order. And may we have a roll call? Council Member Gutierrez? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Rouse? Here. Madam Chair Snedden? Here. Thank you. And um, at this time, we'll have public comment for items not on the agenda. I see one speaker slip for that for Lucas Zucker. Twenty eleven, over nine thousand Latino residents have left Santa Barbara. I'm, excuse me, I'm going to apologize. Your microphone was not on. That was my <laughs> fault. And if I reset the time, would you mind starting sure. over? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No All right. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Snedden, Councilmember Gutierrez, Councilmember Rouse, uh, Lucas Zucker, Policy Director at Cause. As you know, for several years now, tenants in Santa Barbara have been advocating for a just cause ordinance uh, to stem the tide of displacement of working class and immigrant families from the city. Uh, particularly in the east side and west side, uh, we continue to see large corporate landlords from out of town buy up buildings, uh, evict families, and dramatically raise rents. Tenants have shared their stories again and again, the struggles of families having to leave their homes, children having to leave their schools, and neighborhood communities torn apart. Uh, from Ivy Apartments to Voluntario Apartments, the working class immigrant community is being pushed out of Santa Barbara block by block. Recent census data puts raw numbers to this reality. Uh, according to the 2017 data from the U.S. Census Bureau released a few weeks ago, since 2011, over 9,000 Latino residents have left Santa Barbara, over 20% of the city's peak Latino population gone. That's nearly one family per week. Uh, yet the issue of tenant protections has been bounced from committee to committee over the last couple years uh, with no meaningful progress for families living in fear of an eviction notice every day. Um, people are getting tired of waiting and are beginning to lose faith in action from City Hall. Eight months ago, the City Council moved to put a tenant protection ordinance on the ordinance committee agenda, um, and we have yet to see the ordinance committee begin discussion of this issue. Uh, with dozens of Latino families being forced to leave the city every month, eight months is a long time to wait. Um, and for those families, it is already too late. Uh, but for the families who will be forced to move out of Santa Barbara this month and the month after, it's not too late. We need you to take action now. Please put this issue on your next ordinance committee agenda and let's move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, with that, that concludes our uh, public speaking comments not on the agenda. And we will move to the staff report on mobile home park conversion regulations. Thank you, Chair Snedden, Council Members Gutierrez and uh, Rouse. Before we get started, I want to introduce our special counsel. Amy Grayson is at the sta staff table. Uh, Amy helped us beginning in 2016 with assessing what needed to be done with the city's mobile home park conversion regulations and then actually doing it. And uh, in short summary, what needed to be done was take a 1984 city ordinance and bring it up to date in the face of a number of changing state laws that where it hadn't kept pace. I'm going to give the introduction and then uh, turn it over to Amy to walk through the specific changes. Now, stylistically today, I know I've mentioned uh, to each of the committee members separately. I'll say it for you together and, and for the public. This is a little different than some of the other projects that come to your committee. We uh, really need the committee to uh, work through with uh, uh, Ms. Grayson and myself the proposed changes and either uh, direct us now or 
perhaps we can think about some further civic engagement. And I'm thinking of, say, an evening meeting at the Gebhardt or at one of the parks where we can get some broader uh, response once you've filled in some of the blanks that you'll see in the, the ordinance. So with that uh, introduction, let me turn to the slides. OK. Uh, how did we get going on this? Uh, first off, let, let's uh, take a look. This was current in June of 2017. I'm not sure whether it's still current. It, it's an inventory of uh, parks in town. And um, it gives you a sense of why the housing element in your general plan makes it a priority to preserve parks as affordable housing. Now, back in 16, we had community-driven concerns about park conversion. Uh, the policy issues that are raised uh, include displacement of residents uh, and also the loss of affordable housing. So these uh, mobile home units are often some of the most affordable housing stock, and your general plan recognizes that. So the council gave direction to move forward with updating the ordinance. And what's of importance today is that you really wanted us to be no less protective than the county of Santa Barbara's ordinance. So in our work leading to the a meeting in June of 27, uh, 2017, uh, which I should add, in addition uh, to Amy's help, Sue Gray, who's in the, off, uh, in the audience with Liz Stotts, gave major preliminary policy guidance on what to do about some of the questions that you'll confront. Now, I have an editorial note. I said it at the outset. I'm going to say it again. It, it, it's, it's a very complex area of the law. We're talking about government regulation of an economic marketplace. That's hard to do. It's hard to do well. Uh, very quantitative, meaning unlike some areas of the law, there are uh, formulas or equations or value propositions that you need to take into account with numbers. So you're going to see some highly detailed work, and uh, I don't want you to be nervous about it. I just want you to recognize that. It's important because we're translating very basic human concerns here. The, the people living in these parks, at, we know they're, it's generally affordable housing, but they're also relatively vulnerable socioeconomically. So uh, it, it's a situation where we're taking a very real social problem and then trying to walk it through a real technical minefield to do what we can in, in, in the context of the law. Okay. I mentioned this already, but the, the city has for more than 30 years now regulated the conversion of mobile home parks. And um, that's fundamentally the, the basis for going forward. The legal basis, uh, your most recent housing element shows that there has been a substantial loss uh, in the numbers of affordable housing units, down from 519 to 390. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a 1984 ordinance. So the general approach here, uh, what uh, I understood from Ms. Grayson when we got into this in 2016 and 2017 is that the relocation policies here that say that should a park close, the people closing the park will have to compensate the residents. Uh, it's fundamentally a defensible policy. But the updates add a lot of specific uh, changes that are responsive to new law from the legislature and from the cases. Uh, I think it'll help now to turn it over to Amy and begin walking through the specific issues.
Can you hear me? Okay. Um, what we thought would be most helpful <clears throat> would be to start with a comparison of what the city's current ordinance provides and what the county ordinance provides because the idea was to at least provide what the county does. Um, currently, as an example, um, the city has a statement about providing um, replacement space within a reasonable proximity to the city but does not define what that means. Um, other ordinances typically create a radius based on miles, type of housing, uh, feasibility of uh, people moving there based on their own individual needs, such as um, family issues, employment issues, education, medical care. Um, the county is an example of that. They currently look at the number of available spaces within 25 miles, as well as rental rates and the availability basically based on the willingness of existing parks and other areas to accept homes. And those are the kinds of factors that we have to look at when we're looking at the um, impact of uh, taking out mobile home parks in the city. Um, one of the issues that needs to be updated in the city's ordinances, as you can see, there's currently no requirement for an applicant, a park owner, to provide any kind of information to park residents before they apply to the city. However, state law um, does provide some advance notice requirements. Um, it also, the current ordinance also does not require any kind of consultant to assist either the residents or the park owner in figuring out what the best relocation plan is. Um, in contrast, the county requires an informational meeting at least 10 days before the public hearing and also requires uh, a relocation counselor. So that is another area that we have incorporated into the recommended revisions to the ordinance, which we'll go over. Ms. Gracie, may I ask you a question? Sure. Are, are these slides organized that the left column is city and the right column is county? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, the relocation duty is a duty imposed by state law. The city has had a requirement in its municipal code f since the mid-1980s, as does the county. But basically, there's two provisions in state law, Government Code Section 66427.4, which applies when somebody submits a subdivision map to change the use of a park to something else, to close the park, convert a portion of it. Um, there's also a provision in the government code, 65863.7, which all, when there's no map, but it needs a CUP or some other land use permit. And both of these statutes require essentially for cities and counties to come to approve relocation assistance to mitigate significant adverse impacts on the ability of displaced residents to find alternative housing. And so the existing city code is on the left, the existing county code is on the right. So um, this is the first uh, part of this slide sets out the duty under government code section 65863.7, which provides that a relocation uh, assistance plan is to mitigate any adverse impact of the conversion, closure, or cessation of use on the ability of displaced park residents to find um, adequate housing. This statute limits the steps that can be taken to those that do not exceed the reasonable costs of relocation. So when the city is coming up with both an ordinance and standards to be applied in a particular park, that is the legal standard that we have to follow when there's no subdivision map. Um, typically, ordinances will establish, as I said, a geographical radius in order to evaluate what are the reasonable costs of relocation um, we looked at a number of ordinances throughout the state, and it does appear that 50 miles is uh, commonly used and would be factually appropriate for the city of Santa Barbara. And this is a radius. Um, I need new glasses. Um, <laughs> 
you can see that 25 miles essentially incorporates Goleta, Santa Barbara, Carpinteria, Little of Ojai, and Ventura, whereas 50 miles encompasses a lot more cities. And um, this is a, the number of miles you want to include is one of the variables that you can consider in evaluating what may or may not be appropriate for the different types of uh, relocation we would be looking at. If, and if you have any questions, please stop me at any time. Okay. I do have a question about the radius. Is, is this the, um, the radius where you would have to relocate within? That's as far as it would go, or is it a limiting radius? It, How is it used? It will go over that, but it basically would be what would be the costs to relocate within a specified distance for purposes of determining how much a park owner would have to pay a residence. As one example, what would be the moving costs if a person found a park in Lompoc, which is within the 50 mile radius, what are the moving costs to go to that park? And that would be the cost that would be assessed if that was how the ordinance defined what the relocation obligation is, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, let me ask a question, Ms. Grayson. So it, but would a, um, a wider radius necessarily be more expensive for a park owner, or does it depend? How, how should the council committee think about setting that number at 25, 50, 75, whatever it is? It, it's the lawyer's favorite answer, which irritates everyone. It depends. Um, what you're trying to do is approximate where people are living versus where they could find adequate replacement housing that would be a reasonable method of duplicating what they currently have in terms of factors, which could be things such as I said earlier, housing, uh, medical care, education, employment, um, those kinds of factors that would go into an evaluation factually. And that's where your relocation counselor and any additional expertise by staff or any consultant the city retained would be able to evaluate what may be an appropriate radius. Um, for example, keeping people close or looking at a radius that's smaller might encourage people relocating to more expensive housing, um, which may more approximate what it, they currently have. There may be other factors which would become relevant. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Rouse. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> So in determining or recommending a radius to the full council, are we going to be provided with the statistics to say what's available and what type of housing is available and the amount and the economics about that in order to help determine what's a reasonable radius as opposed to just picking a number? That is certainly the type of information that would be relevant for you to look at. And if that's something we could come up with that kind of information to provide to you. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, as I, as I look at the, the, the geographic, uh, you know, elements contained within your circles, I, you know, knowing those communities, I think, well, there's, there's, there's adequate in these places, but certainly not in others, and the expense varies, and certainly the accessibility to roads and the conveniences that, that you know, residents might be used to now is going to vary as well. Correct. And if I might jump in, uh, Chair Snedden, Council Member Rouse, I, th I, I, I think that uh, giving us an idea of what kind of information would go into determining that radius would be real helpful. So Ms. Grayson mentioned things like uh, the impact on commuting and jobs. Uh, I don't know if there's a compendium we can copy from, but if, if you wanted to articulate those kinds of factors at some point, not right this instant, that would be helpful. Um. Well, and certainly for for seniors, the, uh, you know, the proximity to services is going to be important as well. Okay. Um, one of the factors that um, is typically included 
is um, a comparison of what the current rents are for the people who are being displaced and the rents that they would be paying um, in a new location based on the radius. And so typically we would be attempting to figure out what is the median rental rate and what are the co other costs associated with somebody having to relocate. And again, depending on what radius, we could be looking at 50, we could be looking at 25, we could be looking at something else based on what, the, what is most reasonable based on the data. Um, this, is, this slide is a comparison of the current relocation benefits on the left are the city, on the right are the county. Um, starting with the county, um, they basically list, uh, you determine an estimate of moving costs and installing a mobile home and its fixtures in a new site, providing some kind of rental subsidy and potentially purchasing a mobile home where that mobile home can't be moved. Um, they require if, the, if there is uh, no way to move the mobile home, if it's not one that meets current code or there's no available space, then the park owner has to buy the mobile home at its in-place fair market value. And currently the county provides just people who rent a mobile home, they get the greater of three months rent or $7,000. Um, the current city uh, benefits are, um, you have a city condominium conversion ordinance which provides some tenant protections and they get the benefit of those protections and they get, for moving expenses, they get a certain amount greater of one and a half times the monthly rent or $2,000. And then a general statement without any specificity um, measures that are per to mitigate the identif identifiable adverse impacts. That's not defined and that's one of the factors we've tried to define in the recommended provisions of the ordinance. Um, So what we came up with, and this is all up for discussion, but basically in looking at the various ordinances around the state, um, types of homes and situations can be roughly divided into a mobile home owned by the occupants that can be relocated to another mobile home park in theory um, because it meets all current codes, it's movable, it's not going to fall apart if you try and, and detach it from its current foundation and move it. Um, homes that are legally a mobile home, but they can't be relocated because either there's not uh, available spaces in another park or um, they're in a condition where they cannot be moved. Um, homes that people live in that do not meet the requirements to be considered a mobile home under state and federal law. And then I'll go back to this slide, but um, occupants who are merely renters. They don't, occupy, they don't own the home, but they live in the homes. And so ordinances typically, not always, but often base the amount of relocation benefits upon what that occupant's status is. Because again, we're trying to mitigate the cost of someone finding adequate replacement housing. So conceptually, if the home can be relocated to a park within whatever that specified radius is, um, we would be recommending factors such as moving costs, uh, reasonable moving costs to move that mobile home, any fixtures, any accessories to the new site, connect it to the site. Um, if there's a rent differential between the old rent and the new rent, we would be recommending a, a lump sum payment such as a 12 month period. Um, if the home can't be relocated, then we would be recommending that um, besides the rent differential, we would recommend that the uh, park owner pay the homeowner the in-place value of the mobile home itself, um, which would have to be based on an appraisal um, and the same types of reasonable moving expenses. If the home does not qualify as a uh, mobile home, then we would recommend 
uh, picking a radius, such in the example, we have 50 miles to move anything that can be moved uh, to the new site, a uh, lump sum rent differential for 12 months, and then uh, which could be based upon or should be based upon the advertise, median advertised rental rate within that radius or a specified amount. We've indicated 5,000 um, or if the resident is a disabled permanent resident uh, up to $6,000. And again, these are examples of what cities will often require. You would be looking at these factors to decide what, what is most appropriate for people in the city of Santa Barbara. And then uh, as proposed, if the occupant is a renter, uh, they would get their reasonable moving costs to a comparable park or housing within a specified radius. Um, household expenses up to 30 days and a lump sum payment based on again on a rent differential for uh, we usually recommend for 12 months um, and again these are all subject to study and evaluation of what would be most appropriate Um, just to reiterate, if a home can't be relocated, the question is uh, how do we mitigate the impact for that resident who has a home but will no longer be able to live in it by moving it or uh, because something is not available, a space is not available, or it can't be moved, it's too old, parks won't accept really old mobile homes that don't meet current standards. Um, so this can be an area of controversy because park owners resist having to pay appraised fair market value of the mobile home, but that is a factor for you to consider. In order to come up with an a objective, uh, verifiable way to figure out what is um, what would be reasonable costs of relocating and providing somebody with adequate replacement housing. We recommend that the applicant have to retain a relocation consultant who is approved by the city, um, who is familiar with mobile home parks and issues of relocating uh, people from mobile home parks. The cor current ordinance doesn't specify any kind of expertise. So in our definition of relocation specialist, we've included some standards and we would recommend that the ordinance uh, incorporate those into its requirements. And in the, the way the ordinance is set up, the relocation consultant would prepare the relocation impact, uh, I'm sorry, the assistance plan based upon an impact report which would be prepared in part based on their expertise and based on a pre-conversion questionnaire that is filled out by the residents so that the specialist has information about the specific residents at issue in combination with their expertise and background. And all of this ultimately will be submitted to the city for the public hearing. Oops, did I just get to the end? I think I just got to the end. And I can go over some of the elements of the, uh, the impact report if you want me to do that. Um, there are certain requirements, as I said, in the mobile home residency law, which regulates uh, the landlord-tenant relationship between mobile home residents and park owners. It allows uh, only certain reasons to terminate tenancy, and one of those reasons is a change of use of a park, which is defined to include totally closing the park or changing it to another use. And that, or, that statute requires that certain notices, they have to give a notice to prospective tenants when they have or plan to um, submit an application for a change of use. And once all the permits are approved by the city or county, 
the park owner has to give six months notice of termination of tenancy. So in preparing the procedural requirements of an ordinance, we've incorporated those state law requirements into the city's processes to make them work consistently together. And um, when you look through the, the draft, we have a requirement that the park owner provide the residents with a notice of intent to file for a uh, change of use or conversion six months before they do so. And then the park owner has to provide the impact report and relocation assistance plan at least 10 days before the hearing um, and also hold an informational meeting with the residents before the public hearing so that the residents are fully informed as to what is being proposed and so they have an opportunity to if they want to retain somebody to represent them to evaluate the what the park owner is proposing to do they have the time and ability to do that um, as far as the um, impact report is concerned um, it includes such thing information as we've proposed it um, the number of mobile homes that will be displaced the rental rate history for each space over a five-year period the vacancy rate over a two-year period, uh, the makeup of the households as far as whether there are special needs, uh, levels of income, that kind of information, the manufacture date and type of the mobile homes, uh, to the extent the park owner has this information, uh, a list of the mobile homes that may not be able to qualify to be moved into an alternative uh, location, and a statement of availability of replacement spaces because there may be a lot of mobile home parks within the, a radius, but there may not be that much vacancy, which is gonna make it harder for people to relocate. Um, names of the relocation specialists and information about alternative replacement housing. Um, we've also, Propose that information provided in the pre-conversion questionnaire to the extent it includes private information about income or uh, disability issues that that would not be a public record um, and to the extent possible preserve all the confidentiality of that information as needed. This would all, all this information would be submitted to um, the community development director as the hearing officer to evaluate whether findings can be made to determine that in fact uh, the relocation assistance plan does provide a way to mitigate the loss of housing. And that person's decision can be appealed as presently proposed, it can be appealed to the planning commission and to the city council. Um, the idea for the community development director is this is an area that requires some expertise and that's why the suggestion is that that the director serve in that capacity. And I can answer any other questions. Mayor Pro Tem Rouse. Thank you. In the slide where you, I think it was slide four, we talked about RV parks versus mobile home parks. For the purposes of this discussion, are the RV parks the, considered the same as a mobile home park? Under state law, there's a certain amount of preemption for mobile home parks and RV parks in the state. Under state law, if people reside in what is an RV space or an RV park for nine months or more, they basically get the rights of mobile home residents under the mobile home residency law. And so, I see you question, I mean, I, I can, that's what the state has said. We have yeah. to treat them as mobile home residents okay. for purposes of rights, which includes the right to relocation assistance. Well, it says drain, so I assume that's sewer hookup for the individual, which would mean stationary residents. Yes. And yes. in terms of when you talked about, um, the, are all these, all the mobile home parks we're talking about are, rental spaces, whether or not people own the units or not. Is that, is that correct for the purposes of this discussion? Yes, we're not talking about mobile home subdivisions. Okay. Um, and we are also not talking about converting a rental park to resident ownership. 
because that has a separate statute that governs that. Right. Okay. And then in terms of the rental contracts, are they typically, or are they in this area, typically month to month or longer leases? Um, I would defer to staff or the city attorney on that. Um, it's often a combination. Um, so and all that would have to be obviously satisfied on a dissolution of a status as a, as a Malone Park then? Correct. And that's one of the pieces of information we suggest that be collected as far as whether somebody's on a long-term lease or whether they're a month-to-month. Because -month. if they're on a long-term lease and they have a certain rent, that's going to impact, um, obviously, if they have a good deal on their lease, it's going to impact the, um, the effect on them when they have to find replacement housing. And, and in those, in those rents, you would include the HOA or common area fees if there were certain amenities in some parks versus others? I mean, that would typically, be... Typically, yes. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Gutierrez, did you have a question? Oh, you did. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a question. In the staff report, we have um, a list of what is being reviewed today and then what is not being reviewed on page 2 of the council agenda report. Um, and it starts with a list of what is not, we're not proposing to change. Is that list at this time not proposing to change or is that just not at all? It was not part of the assignment. Okay. But it, it could become part of the assignment? By direction of the council. Okay, thank you. So we're, we're not discussing um, vacancy deregulation or control on the rents at all, just on no. park closure? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I was interested to know how much a relocation specialist costs. That I don't know. Okay. Um, that is, if you would like us to include that in what okay. we provide to you, we could find that out. And that would be the responsibility of the applicant who would be the party selling the park? It would either be a park owner who is planning to sell to someone who's going to, wants to develop a different use, or it would be the applicant wishing to retain the, the land but put something else in its place and no longer be in the business of operating a mobile home park. So it would not be the obligation of the tenants? No. No, okay. Okay, I think with, with that, if we don't have any further questions at this time from the committee, we will invite public comment for items on the agenda, um, starting with Etelvina et Menchaca. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Etelvina Menchaca. Presently, I live at 1210 Cacic, Space 44. I've been there for approximately 10 years. Uh, today, what I've been reading and hearing has made a big impact because I wasn't aware of this situation that is happening here, that you'll be doing ordinance. So like I said, it's a lot to digest, okay? I'm sure it's hard for you on the board <laughs> as it is for us in the community. And my other concern, do you have this in Spanish? Because at 1210 Cacique, we have a lot of families that don't speak English. They're elder people like myself, and they need somebody to either go and offer this information or have it provided to them in Spanish. And that's my main concern, okay? And of course, I'm concerned for the rest of my neighbors that most of them are here. Oh, no, well, not all, but some of us that are concerned. And, but my main concern is that I have to really read to digest everything that I've read because it's a mouthful, like they say. And I'm sure it's, that's difficult for you to understand. Maybe you, I'll sit with Oscar and tell him, please explain this to me. I'm sure that if I ask him for the help, he will. 
And I'm sorry that our representative uh, from the east side is not here, Mr. Uh, Dominguez. He should be here too because this applies to our residents where we live. So maybe next time you can invite him to come and uh, be able to get the information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next we'll invite Chris. Uh, it's a B and it ends in an S and I'm hoping that you will. I believe it's Chris Burroughs. Burroughs, Chris Burroughs, thank you. And Chris Burroughs, you have some pooled time. Is John Allen present? Yes, hello. And um, Jesse Espinosa present. Glenita Uriarte. And Keith Witt more present or Whiteman oh George White thank you George I'm sorry no it's, it's my <laughs> it's my reading inability here two four six eight so you will have ten minutes thank you am I supposed to start oh okay. thank um, you I'm sorry just one moment oh, uh -huh. did did we have any comment on Spanish translation before we begin or we'll, uh, okay, thank you. Sorry. What did you, I'm sorry, Chair, you said did we have any comment on Spanish translation? Yes. It makes perfect sense. Just direct us what you want translated. I think a, a fact sheet would make more sense than trying to make, do the ordinance. So just include that in your direction. It, it, it makes good sense. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm having an issue with the countdown timer here. <laughs> I apologize. No worries. Thank you. You may go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you. I've got letters and notes and a little comment I was going to make. So first I'd like to read a, oh, and I want to address what Edelvina said about the Spanish. That's been a, there's a large proponent of Spanish, monolingual Spanish speakers there. And in, when we do have civic engagement, I hope that they can have that also available. Um, so the first letter I want to read is from Sarah Patchen, uh, one of our residents. She says, good afternoon, my name is Sarah Patchen and I'm sorry I am unable to be here in person to read this statement before you. The Flamingo Mobile Home Park has been my beloved home for over 30 years and my fellow residents and I have experienced a number of upheavals, flooding, fire evacuations, loss of de vacancy control, and most recently, the uncertainty accompanying the sale of our park. Almost four years ago, we asked City Council to review and update the mobile home closure ordinance to reflect current housing conditions and to protect the value of our homes should the park be sold or closed. Our park has been sold, but we are hopeful we may continue to feel secure in our homes without significant changes to our way of life or serious threats to our limited low incomes. We are hopeful and also grateful. We'd like to acknowledge and thank everyone involved in the effort to update the ordinance, the city council, our park residents, attorney Kalan, and last but not least, your committee. From our perspective, the proposed revision of the ordinance is not perfect because it still lacks a number of protections we would like to see eventually incorporated. Before the moment, I, for one, appreciate the progress that has been made and urge the committee to submit the revised ordinance for final approval as quickly as possible. Thank you, Sarah Patchen, dated yesterday. And then I just had a very brief statement that I wrote um, that we support the city agenda report 
mobile home park conversion regulations update. The last one I had was 613.17. And additionally ask, but maybe the place is at city council, <laughs> for AUD overlay removal, zoning designation change to senior mobile home park, and reestablishment of vacancy control in the, stabiliz in the rent stabilization ordinance. Then I just got some notes from my brother, who's also a resident in our mobile home park. Um, this is from George Whiteman, and um, he 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 has a full a few bullet points, and one of them the first one says, "Do you want to read these?" Sure, I'll read. Them. Good. I can't, I oh, can can, can is that? Yeah. That's, that's fine, and I, I, I will pause the time. All of these proposals involve. I'm George Whiteman, by the way. Lived in the park for uh, five or six years, but my family moved here in 65. We moved into that park, and so I've been here ever since. Um, so that's my home. Uh, it's been our home. Uh, and all of these things propose us being moved to a new location, which is expected, but any place you move us outside of the city is a loss in itself. Santa Barbara is Santa Barbara. We've, I've loved this place since I was 13 years old. Even before that, we moved here because it's Santa Barbara. Moving us to Goleta, I mean, it's not Santa Barbara. You can look at the cost of, of housing drop off as it goes outside of the city. Moving us to Lompoc is not, I mean, the cost effective thing to do would be to move us to Bakersfield. Everything could go there, it'd be very effective, but Bakersfield is not Santa Barbara. That's my point. I don't know how you put a value on the beauty of this city, the, the ambiance, the peace, the, well, you know, you live here. <laughs> this is a wonderful place and I'd hate to see us be evicted from the city. That's the main thing. Uh, just holding on to the park would be the so much best thing for everybody. Most of these homes, a lot of these homes, are not going to be transferable to another park. Nobody will take a home that's 35 years old, 45 years old. So the cost to move into like a place on wall, $300,000, $400,000. Just want to make that point. Thank you. Thank you. You still have five minutes if um, we'd like to use them. You're good. Okay. Um, our next speaker will be Jim Farned. Oh, yes, you do. Okay, so Charles, you're present. Okay, any other pool time? Is the two of I have four minutes. You have four minutes. Okay. Yes, you do. Um, <clears throat> um, Madam Chair, committee, attorney. The city attorney has designated objectivity, specificity, and certainty as goals of these deliberations. I would like to call attention to several key terms such as mitigation, relocation, reasonable, conversion, civic engagement, and radius. Um, and, and I would like to call it to such a, that which will require considerable clarification. For example, mitigation is defined by FEMA as the effort to reduce loss of life and property from adverse impacts of disastrous events based on studies of psychological, physical, and financial effects of mobile home park closures, it is clear that the effects of such closures can be similar in substance and degree to losses incurred in natural disasters. While the effects of the forces of nature are difficult, if not impossible, to regulate and control as our community has tragically witnessed this last year. The real estate market forces at play in mobile home park conversions are not. It is just such issues of market control and regulation and thereby the okay. mitigation of adverse effects which brings us together today. In order for mitigation to be effective, FEMA notes, action may be required, quote, now before the adverse 
events to reduce human and financial consequences later by analyzing, quote, risk, reducing risk, and insuring against risk, end quote. It is to these ends of analyzing, reducing, and insuring against civic risk that our residents of Flamingo Senior Park anticipate the civic engagement sessions as specified by the attorney in his staff report of June the 13th, 2017 to occur either before, quote, or during the ordinance committee review process since civic sessions have not been held before <laughs> this review process, when, where, and how will such sessions be conducted? In the case of Flamingo Senior Park, our current residents represent a cumulative total of over 1,500 person years of community residents. It should not require a degree in sociology to appreciate that such a level of residency constitutes a significant contribution to any definition of community. We are encouraged by the designation of the community development director as decision maker regarding permit applications, but are yet we are yet concerned regarding appeals. Um, regarding um, appeals of such decisions. The proposed revisions imply that permits may be granted to developers upon approval of either the director or the planning commission or the council. We think that this sufficiency of a single approval should be replaced with equivalent sufficiency for denial. Surely it is our vulnerable senior residents rather than wealthy developers who deserve the benefit of the doubt in this case. As ours also, as ours is a designated senior park, we would want any definition of conversion to include loss of that designation. And finally, the determination of radius should take into account that in the case of coastal cities such as Santa Barbara, the circular region for relocation thereby determined is approximately one half ocean. Thank you. Uh, next speaker will be Ann Anderson. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ann Anderson, and although um, I live in a mobile home park, I do not live within the city limits, but I am a vice president of GSMOL, which is Golden State Manufactured Home Owners League. Um, in that capacity, I was one of those who helped to get the county ordinance enacted, and so I have a great familiarity with the language in that ordinance and was one of those who encouraged the people at Flamingo to apply to have the ordinance updated. I want to thank you very much for the hard work that's gone into making these updates. Um, and I just wanted to say that I'm hoping that there will be an opportunity at some point to address the, uh, the rent ordinance. I do believe that the vacancy control issue is important. Um, I hope that that issue will be eventually addressed. I am also hoping at some point in a, the possibility of a change of zoning to a mobile home park zone might be considered. Um, I would like to just say that I think that the radius that was proposed of possibility of 25 miles is better, and this is for one of some of the reasons that the people have, that have already spoken have mentioned. It is very difficult to relocate, particularly vulnerable seniors, disabled people, um, people who have a job that's right there in the city that, that's, that maybe they don't have a car and they take their bicycle to work. There are so many different factors that are involved with the, the people that typically live in our mobile home parks that really make it difficult to send these people off to Lompoc or Oxnard or someplace that's so far away from home that they're displaced from their families, from their medical facilities that they're used to, 
um, all of the things that, that, they, that they intend to keep with them as they uh, grow older in age. And so I would just consider that the radius of 25 miles is more reasonable. And as a little nitpick, I also wanted to point out that Lacumbre Mobile Home Park and Poppy Trailer Park are actually in the county. They're not within the city limits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Sharon Rose. Good afternoon, my name is Sharon Rose. How much time do we have? Th two minutes? Two minutes. Could I have some of Chris's time so she's not using it? Um, is that allowed? Okay. Um, I'm yeah. gonna need more than two minutes. I won't take the whole time though. Yes, why don't we pool you with Sharon's time, which would give you five minutes on Sharon's time. Great, thank you. All right, so uh, my name is Sharon Rose. I'm an advocate for mobile home residents, and I have an organization called the Mobile Home Owners Project, and I'm also a vice president of GSMOL, our state organization. And I wanted to say that, um, first of all, mobile home parks pretty much do not accept used homes. So um, we do take issue with the radius um, item, um, and I'll go into that later. Um, I wanted to say that also we don't want this to go to planning commission. We don't want it to take another year. We're really hopeful that you can work it out in this ordinance committee and move it to city council. The people in Flamingo Park have a new owner and there are concerns about their future. What's going to happen when something changes ownership? We've seen other parks redeveloped and there's a tendency now for uh, vulture takeovers of parks by larger corporate entities, and we wanna keep these communities small, safe, and affordable. Um, with regard to some of the Santa Barbara County Ordinance provisions, we really think it's important that appraisals and selection of the relocation specialist all be done by independent and objectively chosen entities chosen by the city. We don't want the park owners to choose the person who's going to do the appraisal or the relocation plan. Um, we're really appreciative of all the time and energy you've put in going over this. Now I wanna talk about the radius. People who live in Santa Barbara feel this is home. People who live in mobile home parks, especially this one, they have gray hair, they're seniors, they have families here. They have grandchildren, they have son-in-law who comes over to fix the broken thing. We help watch our grandchildren. Um, there are so many invisible elements to this of what it means to relocate somebody. If we have that 50 mile radius, it means someone would have to go to Lompoc. And that's a benefit to the park owner because property is cheaper there and we're asking for fair market value for compensation of our homes and our relocation. And I wanted to point out, uh, three years ago, some local residents hired an attorney called Will Constantine who is the foremost attorney on park conversions. He lives in Santa Cruz. He did a study of 35 mobile home park conversions and what at that time in 2012, there were 18 had a limit of 12 miles or less for the radius. Three did not specify a limit, including Ventura's ordinance. The overwhelming number of ordinances were 20 miles radius. We want that for Santa Barbara. We don't want to be told that if we have a home here, if we have a church here and a community here, that we have to go somewhere else later in life. This is very hard on senior citizens. What we know about health of seniors is that they are healthy when they're engaged and where they're, they're surrounded by familiarity and people who care about them. So we look forward to working with you further on this. We want to do more work on it with you. We don't want it to take another year. Thank you. Thank you. So on the Chris Burroughs poll time, you still have one minute if you choose to use it. Otherwise, our last speaker will be Anna Marie Gott. Can with I the one minute to 
No. She already has time with Jesse Espinoza, who's present. Is Jesse present? Okay. Did you already pool time elsewhere, Jesse? Mr. Espinoza? Yeah, he gave his minutes before you gave Chris's minutes to uh, the other woman. If you want, I can use my minutes from Allied Neighborhood Association or from Flamingo. Okay. If you, Miss Scott, you have four minutes. Give me a moment here to reset. And when you're ready, go ahead. So as speaking for Allied Neighborhood Association for just a moment, I am the vice president of Allied and a year ago, it's been more than a year ago, we actually voted and it was unanimous to make sure that the AUD overlay was removed from Flamingo, but that still hasn't happened. I would urge you to do everything possible to not only ensure that this is actually going to be removed as soon as possible from the AUD overlay, but also to really speed this along because this has been sitting too long at city council and on staff's desk. Speaking for myself, as you are well aware, we have about 1,400 residents over the last year that have left Santa Barbara because they are unable to afford housing in Santa Barbara. These individuals that live not just at Flamingo, but at the other uh, park, which is right next door, tropi uh, the Tropical Gardens, that represents about 300 people. They are on the edge. They will not be able to find housing anywhere else if these parks close. If these parks close, you're going to ship them 50 miles away? I don't think so. It is not appropriate to do that. As the woman just testified, these people have deep roots in the community. They have people that look out after them. They have people that they look after, their grandchildren. They are elderly and sick and cannot, in many cases, be moved. I think you really need to consider a much shorter distance. 50 miles is too far. 20 miles, 15 miles, that would, might be appropriate. Someone could still get to their house to take them to the doctor. They might still be able to see their grandchildren. But if you actually decide that they're going to actually be able to be moved 50 miles away, what will their life be like? Will their family also have to move because they have to take care of them? Will they be actually forced into a cramped home because they can't afford something else in Santa Barbara? Those are the things that you have to think about. We are gentrifying Santa Barbara. You read in the news hawk yesterday, 300 employees for Amazon are going to be hired. Do you guys know what happens when Amazon hires employees? They're not local. They are brought in from other cities, other countries. They are not the local residents that we need to worry about. You should be focusing on our residents that we have here now and trying to make sure they are actually going to benefit from the decisions that you make. Not outsiders. You were not hired by outsiders. They did not vote for you. The people who voted for you are the people that are struggling every day to stay in Santa Barbara. And if you choose a decision other than what something that will allow these individuals to stay in their home, to make sure that this is a senior park, which is what it should be, to ensure that the AUD overlay is removed and make sure that the rents are reasonable, then you are choosing someone else over the residents of Santa Barbara. And I'm tired of watching the city council choose developers and businesses over the residents that voted for them. Please choose to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our public comment and it is now to council committee. Mr. Kalan. Uh, 
Uh, Chair Sneddon and uh, members of the committee, let me address a couple of things that came up. Uh, one, is civic engagement. We had uh, in the recommendation ask for your guidance on that, and uh, if you've got uh, some suggestions, that would be uh, excellent. I don't. It, this will have to go to the Planning Commission, but we don't have to uh, have that be uh, a process that's going to take months if we get back out there quick, quickly. Mayor Pro Tem Rouse. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, Mr. Cullen, I have, well, one recommendation certainly is to provide, as you said, uh, you know, everything in English and Spanish so that all those people can be included. And then number two is rather than having a, um, uh, having a, a more formal planning commission style hearing, yes, yeah, something like the Faulkner Gallery with a community outreach in the evening um, that has, is more facilitated than a, than a, uh, a, a move and second type of hearing would be good. So we can clearly hear all the, the concerns of the residents, especially those who had to be at work today instead of here, um, and get the full picture so we have a better idea of the parameters we're dealing with. I, I would agree with those assessments. My concern would be if it slows the process down, um, if it could happen between the time when it would ordinarily go back to Planning Commission, that would be my preference to have it not affect the timing. Yes, if you, if uh, one question related to that would be whether the committee would like to see it again. Ordinarily, I think it's valuable to bring it back to the Ordinance Committee, and then it would go to the Planning Commission with a very strong direction from you that this is what you wanted. Uh, I think that's correct. Is that um, okay? Yeah. Can I ask, are there parts of this that have already been through civic engagement, or has that not occurred at all? The distance radii, obviously, that you heard about. So, no, that had not been through civic engagement. But to the extent the ordinance was based on the counties, it has been designed to the standard that the the council wanted and uh, which was no less protective than the county. I, I did hear a couple of comments though during public comment about the county ordinance so obviously uh, in addition to some uh, meeting civic engagement uh, I'll make my email available and I'll be happy to send out word copies of this for people to edit mm -hmm. uh, and get comments in that way. I, I know, excuse me, for certain that uh, some of the park owners lawyers are going to want to do that. Is it your recommendation that it go through the process of civic engagement? Yes, it, it, and in terms of conducting a meeting, I think the Faulkner Gallery makes a lot of sense, but I'd like the flexibility to get it in wherever I can the most quickly. Okay, thank you. And and I definitely agree with having Spanish translation available as well. We will do that for the meeting for sure, but uh, like I said, I'd prefer to prepare a fact sheet in Spanish than the ordinance itself. Thank you. Councilman Gutierrez. Thank you. Um, could it be possible to require the relocation consultant to be bilingual? Or, yes. Okay. Thank you. Could include that as a standard. I see, I see your hand raised. Um, our, our public comment period is concluded. If you would like to. I don't know, may I use one minute left of the pool time to acknowledge? Please come forward. Okay. Uh, Please come to the microphone, e either one that is available to you. Take your time. First of all, I didn't realize this seems to be directed to potential purchases of mobile parks. Flamingo's been sold, as far as we know, and he intends to keep it as a mobile home park. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. 
I would tell you my history at my age because I'm probably a typical person living there. I'm 90 and, and I've lived there 30 years and I, I don't want to go anywhere. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember Gutierrez, did you still have a comment? Yes, thank you. Um, this is zoned as an R3, is that correct? I don't know. I apologize. I can find out quickly. Go, if uh, let me get it. Sorry. Okay, I'm getting the map here. I'm afraid I can't tell exactly um, from this detailed map, but go ahead and maybe I can work around it. I was just wondering, uh, what does the, uh, what zoning does uh, rental, vacation rentals fall under? Oh, that, w that would be uh, R3 and higher. What, uh, and uh, Ms. Uh, Grayson can help you on this better than I, that, that it, when we came in uh, uh, both 2016 and 2017, the residents were interested in mobile home park only zoning, which had been authorized by a case coming out of Ukaipa, if I remember correctly, Ms. Grayson? That's correct. So the idea there was that the zoning would not allow th other things like AUDs. Uh, and it's legally possible for the city to do that. And I believe we already have direction on the AUD overlay. Okay, thank you. I, I suppose, well, excuse me for interjecting, but I suppose if the, if the committee wants us to Boy, uh, try and coordinate those two activities. Um, we can try. I'm, I'm hesitant because I'm not exactly sure where in the process the overlay is, but it sure makes sense. I can understand why you'd want them coordinated. I, I certainly would want them coordinated. I don't know if that's the will of the ordinance committee or not and what that does to the timing um, you, you started to address several comments that um, were made, and I think I will just share my perspective and see where we go from there. Um, for the radius, I think 20 miles or less is appropriate. Um, even on the county relocation, that's a large county, so and it's 25 miles, and that would relocate a resident within the county. I think 20 miles for the city or less um, would be my recommendation. Um, I, I would like it to come back to full council um, the other issues that are not being addressed today with the vacancy control issues, changing the zoning, um, the AUD overlay removal. Um, it seemed like that was already the will of the previous council and is somewhere in progress that's um, I would like an update on or to have that brought forward as quickly as possible as as part of this, um, or, or, or I suppose not part of this, as separate from this, but as a high priority, and then have this civic engagement sessions be um, as soon as they can fit into scheduling so that this process, which has been quite lengthy, um, can get underway. I think most people are in agreement that this needs to move forward and whatever we can do to make that happen. 
Um, I don't know if that requires a formal motion or um, my fellow committee members want to also add comment on those. Uh, Councilman Gutierrez. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? All of it, or the, the recommendations? The recommendations. My main recommendations would be that the radius be 20 miles or less, 20 miles at a maximum, um, and I would like it referred back to full council, the vacancy control issue, the change in the zoning to be a senior park, and then um, the high priority on that is the AUD overlay removal from mobile home parks. Um, my thinking on that is that mobile home parks are uh, separate in how they operate from what an AUD is trying to accomplish, and mobile home parks already um, provide opportunity for lower income housing, more sustainable housing, that we don't need to then be overlaying AUD on top of that and having situations where people are bought out and, it, and for density's sake. Um, those would be my main recommendations. I agree with those. Mayor Pro Tem Ross. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go back to my point about information because we're talking about a radius that's an arbitrary number. It happens to be an even number or an odd number, whichever one. But we don't have the information. We don't know the density, availability, and types of facilities that are out there. And rather than limit ourselves to something we come up with on the dais, let's be informed first and find out what's out there, what the markets are like, what the amenities are like. Clearly, you know, we have we should all share a concern to ensure that the residents have as much protections as possible within the scope of the fact that we are dealing with private property. So we have to be mindful of that. We can't just take and, and demand that things act a certain way. So I'm I'm hesitant to get into things about vacancy and rent control. It's over and above what's already in, in, in memorialized in law. So I'd like to stick more to our uh, agenda requests and focus on the mobile home park conversion part of it and the condominium conversion parts of this going forward, along with adding the AUD overlay, uh, which is in process, but I do think it would make sense to bring those together simultaneously. And so I... I don't know what the pleasure of the committee is, um, but I do think that public outreach is is important. I think it's important earlier than later. I think there are also two sides of the coin. We're going to need to hear from the people that actually own and operate these uh, these facilities as well. Uh, we can't just be one-sided in this and, and going forward before we go into recommendations to PC and council. So that's what I would suggest the most rapid um, path towards the amount of information staff can provide regarding other facilities, comparable rents, comparable amenities, distances traveled, proximity to services, everything that would matter to somebody who lives in a mobile home park, have that in front of us before we even think about talking about a mile designation for a radius and go forth from there and then have everything uh, or have as, as much as is as, as salient translated into Spanish and have Spanish translation available during an open uh, committee meeting. I think all those elements are important to get us to a point where we can have a reasonable conversation and move something through sooner than later so that people out here can have some assurances what their future is like. Thank you. So at this point, would we be in, in agreement that it would come back to ordinance committee with the radius data and um, after civic engagement has occurred? I think civic engagement earlier than later is important, yes. Okay. And then um, the fact sheet translated before the civic engagement um, and keeping in mind that we're interested in the AUD overlay being coordinated and then having that come back to ordinance before moving on to planning. I can't guarantee that one, Chair. That they, I'll have to see where it is in the process. If it's on to the Planning Commission fairly quickly, we may not want to bring it back here. It might slow it down, but I'll, I'll, I'll look at that one okay. uh, as well. Thank you. And then for the, for the other items um, that are not specifically 
in this recommendation, but are referenced in the staff report. So I, I believe could be moved forward to council for discussion um, if we had a motion possibly from this committee to look at, at a later time, vacancy control issues, zo changing zoning to senior park. Um, if we were interested in that, that would not be part of this trajectory, but to also be looked at if there were two of us who wanted to do that. Is that, is that appropriate that it's agendized that we could make that recommendation or is that? Um, you can direct us to report to the city council. What I would suggest is that we report to the city council that in addition to this ordinance that uh, the committee is interested in both whether vacancy control is an option and um, you said senior park zoning. Uh, you may want to look also at mobile home park okay. zoning generally, not just senior, because there may be other parks that that doesn't fit with. So we can uh, do a few paragraphs that indicate your interest in that. I don't think we have authority to get uh, to do vacancy D control here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, I think. Yes. If, if I may, I think that uh, um, those are subjects that cast a bit of a broader brush, and I'm interested in expediency and moving towards the point for a lot of these folks earlier. And also, there are other parts of mobile home park law, both in state and county, that may, you know, may interweave with this. So let's not try to reinvent the wheel before we have the full, the full menu in front of us. Agreed. Do we have clear direction, Mr. Kalan? Yes, uh, Chair Snedden, what uh, I understand uh, we will be doing is uh, coming back to the Ordinance Committee with radius data, and namely the, the kinds of information that uh, uh, you've heard about today that would affect the quality of life of somebody who is forced to move. Um, we'll do that after conducting some c civic engagement. The uh, civic engagement session will be public. We'll have a Spanish translator there as well as a fact sheet summarizing what's going on translated in Spanish. And uh, I will look into whether we can coordinate the AUD overlay item coming back or somehow coming through this committee. And uh, if you, if the committee wishes to, to have us mention your interest in vacancy, uh, control and senior and mobile home park zoning, we can add that as well. But I haven't, I haven't heard a clear direction on that one. I, I suppose I would like those looked at, but not if it slows down this particular process. I think it's important to get this ordinance through in the process you described, and then having in mind that we will be looking at at a future time the other two issues, if we are in agreement. And do we need a motion to that effect, or? Do we, do we need a motion, or? Not necessarily. Okay. We're coming back to you. Then okay. I agree. Okay. Do we have any other questions or comments from the committee? It is our three. <laughs> any other questions or comments? Okay, I believe that concludes our meeting today. Thank you.